Welcome back. In this session, we're going to explain how bonds work and how bond values are determined. And we've got a problem here to demonstrate the process. It says calculate the expected price of a bond with a coupon rate of 8.5%, a face value of $1,000, and a time to maturity of six years. An appropriate current market interest rate is 8%. Okay, so we have the formula on how to calculate a bond value down here. And it's the present value of a bond which equals the payments uh, times the present value interest factor of an annuity at a percentage for a, a period of time. Plus the future value, uh, the, the present value of the future value. Okay, so let me explain what this all means and then we're going to work it. Okay, so bonds are, you're going to have a face value of $1,000. Bonds are always traded in increments of $1,000. So face value of one bond is $1,000. And there's always a coupon rate on a particular bond with an interest rate. There, it's not always the same, but on a particular bond, it, it's always the same. So 8.5% is a fixed rate. So what that, that means to you is that when you calculate the interest payments, it's always going to be this 8.5% times the face value of $1,000. So let's put that in here as our, as our payments. Let's actually do it out over here. And we'll label this up as payments. Okay, so let's put in the first year. And we've got our $1,000. And we're going to multiply that times 0 0.085, which is 8.5%. Okay, and we know that these are the same all six years. So we're just going to copy that to all six years. That's our payments of interest at the end of each of the six years. Remember that it's at the end of the year each, each year, because that's when interest is paid. Okay, so now what we want to find is the present value of the payment. So let me start a column for that present value of payments. That should suffice. Okay, so how do we do that? And we'll use we'll just use the uh, technique I showed you in another slide using the formulas, and we're going to do it what I call the easy way. We're going to take the payment. And we're going to multiply that by the present value interest factor. Okay, and, and the present value interest factor is 1 plus the interest rate of 8.5% because that's how we got that, uh, or I'm sorry, it's 8% because that's what the market interest rate is. So that's what we have to use here. In other words, when I say the market rate, bonds trade in the open market like stocks do, and the values change daily almost. So that's what we need to use. So we have 1.08. And then we're going to raise that to the first power because we're at the end of the first year. So um, the present value, I did something wrong here. That should be a minus. And if you recall back, whenever you have a minus, of a power that means you're dividing one or you're dividing the factor into one and that's that means you're discounting instead of compounding because you want to know what that eighty five dollars is worth today so it shouldn't be more it should be less and to make it less that's what you have to do okay so that's seventy eight seventy and now we can just copy this again and put it all down here and we could have used the financial functions, um, but we won't in this case because I just want you to get comfortable with some of the things that I'm showing you. And so we're going to do it a different way here. And now we can add these up. And this is the present value of all our payments. We come over here to sum. Okay, so the present value of the 685, 6 the payments of $85 for six years is $392.94. Okay, so 
Okay, so we did this part and we could do it another way. Let me show you two other ways because these might come in handy and these, these use the financial functions. One way is to use NPV. Okay, so if we use NPV, what we have to do here is grab the NPV function, which is right at the top, so we'll choose it. And we're going to put in our rate of 8%. And then where it says value one in the box here, um, we can grab from one to six. It's from year one to six. And we can hit enter. There you have it. Okay, we'll do it even another way, which probably is the, the absolute best way in this case. And we're just going to use the present value function. Okay, so we'll go down here. We'll grab our present value function and our rate is eight percent because that's our market rate and um, we have to put in our number of payments because this is an annuity so we have um, six payments and it's an annuity we, we use payments so we'll put this in as a minus because it's a payment okay and if we do that you can see we're going to come out to the same answer and I like that the best because that shows how to work the annuity part the best. So hopefully so you understand it. Okay, so we've got this whole part of the formula done. And now all we have to do is solve for this part. So what is the future value in this problem? The future value is the $1,000 that we're going to get back at the end of year six. In other words, that's the maturity value. So when it matures... And it says that up here, when it matures in six years, you're going to get $1,000 back on that bond. So we'll put that in here. And so now we have to find the present value of that future value in order to solve the problem. Okay, and you probably have some ideas on how to go about that. We'll use the formula again, just so we're consistent. So we're going to take $1,000, and we're going to multiply that times our present value interest factor which is 1 plus 06 or 08 percent and we're going to raise that to the negative 6 power because we're getting this at the end of year 6 and it's going to give us the same thing we would get if we use the function so let's see let me I want to format this to two decimal places so we can keep this all in dollars. Here we go. Okay, so now we have 630.17. So let's just put the total down in here. Gotta grab it over here. Okay, so now we have, well, let's make it consistent and put a line under it. So we have a line under it. Okay, so now we have our two parts of the formula and so what do we need to do and I'll, let me label this because I never did label this this is maturity value maturity okay and this is if we label it is the present value of the maturity value just going to call it MV. Okay, so now we have all the pieces. Now all, all we need to do is, and I'll do it here, we'll add it up. And so we have 392.94 and see the formulas calls for a plus, so we're going to put in a plus and we're going to add it to the present value of the maturity value. Okay, notice that we have $1,023.11. So let's explain this all, okay? We're actually getting in raw dollars $1,000 back in six years, but today it's only worth six thirty seventeen. But we're going to make up for that because over the six years we're going to get these six payments of $85, and we're discounting that back to what they're worth today. So we're dealing with apples to apples. So the value of this bond today is $1,023.11. And um, 
by the way, let's do this one other way just so you can um, see that there's more than one way to do this. And we can do this with present values. So let's put this in. Here's present. Here's your present value function. As I did it with the formula before. And we're going to put in our 8%. And in this case, we had, we're at the end of 6 years. So that's 6. And um, this is a future value because it's at the end of the 6th year. So we'll put in our thousand dollars as a minus here and that gives us the same answer we did with the formula so you can check yourself out with these things as well okay now getting back to this why is this thousand twenty three eleven more than a thousand dollars of the face value of the bond okay well I gave you a clue before these things trade daily and they trade at different prices if you were an investor and the current interest rate is is only eight percent but this thousand dollar bond is paying eight and a half percent would you be willing to pay more yeah i think you would because eight and a half percent is a better rate than eight percent isn't it so that's why you have a thousand twenty three eleven conversely if the uh let's say the uh coup let's say the um market interest rate was 9%, this value is probably going to come out to something less than a thousand dollars. Okay. But this is how you calculate what the value is. And you, and you can work some other problems on your own and change it around and come up and you could put in 9% and see what this comes up to if you put in 9% instead of 8, 8%. Remember the eight and a half is fixed. The 8% is what changes because it's a market rate. Market rates change daily. Anyway, so I'll show you the uh, the big shortcut. And we're just going to do it down here and then we'll be done. So if we use our functions and we come back here and we use our present value function. We open that up. And um, our rate is going to be our 8% rate. And we have six periods. And our payments, that's our minus 85 because that's our interest payments. And then we take our future value, that's uh, minus 1,000. You can put everything in one, in one function, because you've got your annuity right here in your payments, and you've got your maturity value here in your future value. And you click OK. And that's the easiest way, the absolute easiest way. And I just wanted you to see the mechanics, so, but it, it's really not that difficult to calculate. That's it. We'll see you in the next slide.